today we're going to do the stuff we did on Friday, graphing, but today we're going to do it by hand. Doing this bell work is going to be really important for that. What angle should you plug in for theta to make r as big as possible? So for each of these three equations, I've got a theta. My job is to make r as big as possible. Show me with your fingers what is the biggest possible r value I could get on this first one. Show me with your fingers. What do you think the biggest possible r value is? All right, so we had two options. It's seven or four, people are saying. Think about this for a second. It is four minus three times sine. Think about what a sine graph looks like. Okay, if I were to graph you a sine real quick, the sine looks like this, right? In between what two numbers does sine fluctuate back and forth between? negative one and positive one, right? It goes to negative one. Those are your own. It's negative one and one and anything in between. And so that's what I'm thinking about here. What number would make this as big as possible? Negative one or anything in between. What would be the best number to plug in here? Negative one. Because if it's negative one, now it becomes four plus three, which would get me an R of seven. What angle would I have to plug in here to make that sign become negative one? 270 degrees is what we're looking at. At 270 degrees, that is when sine is negative 1. That is what we just worked through. Let's show you what that means. Okay, so we can do the math, but let's show you what that means. We're doing r equals, is it 3, no, 4 minus 3 sine theta. There's my graph. What did we say? Well, we said the radius was going to be 7. Oh, yep, right there. It looks like the radius is going to be 7. And when did that happen? Down here at 270 degrees, down here at the bottom. That's the maximum radius. That's where it's occurring. Does it make sense what we got from that graph based off of that problem? All right, let's try another one. R equals 2 theta. What angle could I plug in here to make this radius be as big as possible? 360. Did I give you any limitations? And, uh, see, I didn't give you restrictions. If I gave you restrictions, I agree. 360 degrees would be the biggest thing possible. But I didn't give you any restrictions. So how big can my radius get? Infinitely large. Because I can just keep adding. 360 degrees is a great angle. But I could also plug in 460 degrees or 1,060 or whatever and keep going on and on and on. Let's show you what that graph would look like. If I graph R equals 2 theta, I get that graph right there. Notice that it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And if I zoom out, here it stops. The only reason why it stops is because decimals automatically goes from 0 to 12 pi. But if I made that bigger... It's going to keep growing. Oh, no, it stopped on me. If I put in too many numbers, then it gets mad. But I can zoom out, and you can see that that graph's going to keep going. Now, again, I stopped at 1,000. If I kept going even bigger, it would keep growing larger. It just does the weird stuff where it doesn't like it. because the... This one, that one's the prettiest. I like that one the most. But you can see you can do some pretty cool stuff with that. Yeah, don't graph that one by hand. Here we go. Next one, r equals negative 4 cosine theta. So same idea. This time it's r equals negative 4 times something. Again, I'm plugging in for cosine theta. I'm doing graphing cosine. Cosine lives between 1 and negative 1. What number do I want to plug in here to make it as big as possible, 1 or negative 1? Negative 1. Because if I go negative 1, now it's negative 4 times negative 1 which would get me a positive radius of 4. But I also want to know what theta is going to get me that. What angle would I need to plug in to make cosine of theta equal to negative 1? 180 degrees. All right, 180 degrees. Let's look at that again just to see what it looks like. By cool graph. R equals negative 4 cosine theta. Oh, I'm way zoomed out. Let's, uh, wee, there we go. The radius is 4. When did that maximum happen? Over here where 180 degrees would be. 
That's what we're going to do today. We're going to graph these by hand and better understand the characteristics based off of that information. All right, here we go. All right, so first thing we got is we've got these three shapes. We talked about them on Fridays. On Friday, here we go. We've got a cardioid first. Cardioids happen when you have a constant and a leading coefficient that are the same. I don't care if they're both positive or if they're both negative. As if those numbers are the same, we're good. Okay. A cardioid looks like this. It looks like kind of like a rounded heart or a peach or a butt. Whatever one makes you feel better inside, that's what the picture is. Okay. Limassons. I don't know how to do the French thing in my calculator or on my app, but again, it's got that cool little C. What's that C called? It's a French C. It's got a little guy down below it. That's why it's Limasson and not Limacon, but it is a Limasson. It does not have a loop. You can tell a Limasson does not have a loop if the number out in front, the constant, is bigger than the leading coefficient. I don't, again, I don't care if it's positive or negative. If that number is larger than the other number, then we're going to have a Limasson without a loop. My last one is a Limasson with a loop. If your A, if the leading coefficient is less, I'm sorry, if your constant is less than your leading coefficient, you're going to get a limason with a loop. When I think about the shape of a limason, I think of like a cold basketball. Okay, I think you had a basketball sitting out over the weekend and you go to pick it up and you try to dribble it. It just kind of hits. Okay, it would have like a little dent in the side. It was a nice little circle, but now it's got a dent in it. Okay, a limason with a loop. Now we don't just have a dent, but we get this kind of inner roller coaster loop de loop on the inside. Those are the different shapes we're dealing with. Make sense on how we found those different things? Yes. Based off of those ideas, categorize these five shapes for each one. Say what they are. Go. Joey, what do you say on this first one? Three plus two cosine theta. What was my shape? Limason without a loop. Uh, my next one there, Abby, what do you say on one plus cosine theta? Cardioid, because that leading coefficient is a one. So that is a cardioid. If it is a cardioid, you remember that's going to touch the origin. It's going to touch the origin. Four minus four sine theta. Uh, Jack, what do you say on that one? That is also a cardioid because these two numbers are the same. It is a cardioid. My next one, uh, Sadie, two minus cosine theta. What about on that one? Yeah, Limasson without a loop. It is without because this number is bigger than that number, which is a one. So if it's bigger on the outside, then it's without a loop. And then my last one, uh, Allison, what's my last shape going to be here? A Limasson with a loop. It is a loop because this number is bigger than that one. And by good to that point, then we're talking about symmetry, even and just even odd functions in general. When we talk about these things, we did them. We did a little bit on Friday, but we want to see what's going on. When you think of sine, what do you think about? Sine means what? Y. y over R, or just Y even better. Sine. When I'm thinking sine, I'm thinking Y. So if you are dealing with a function that has sine in it, it tells you that it has Y axis symmetry. Show me with your hands, how would you fold a graph if it has Y axis symmetry? You would take it and you would fold it hot dog style. Okay. And so I'm going to just draw a shape that has Y axis symmetry. So like a heart. Aww. It's a heart. Okay. You are making Valentine's day cards soon for someone. You could graph them a sign graph on a, on these things and it would make them a heart. Everybody good there. Next one. Cosine. If we're graphing cosine, what letter are we thinking about? X. So if we're graphing cosine, we have X axis symmetry. Show me with your hands. How would you fold a graph if it has X axis symmetry? You would fold it down on top of it. Okay. So what is a shape or a letter perhaps that only has X axis symmetry? I. Yeah, I disagree. I. Oh, you're right. You're right. A C. Sure. How about the letter C? The letter C has x-axis symmetry would s have x-axis symmetry no it wouldn't match up we heard a couple places how about the letter b 
Yeah, you got to draw your letters right. But B, D, K, you could see some different letters that would match up and, and get you the right symmetry. Everybody good to that point? All right, next section. Finding maximum values. This is what we did in bell work. Okay, we just got done doing this. But we're trying to figure out what could theta be that would make this the biggest. So, for example, it's 3 plus 2 times something. Cosine fluctuates back and forth between negative 1 and 1. That's what cosine could be. What number would I want to plug in here to make this as big as possible? Would I want to plug in 1 or negative 1? 1. Because if I plugged in 1, I'd get 3 plus 2. That would get me a radius of 5. That's as big as I could possibly get. But the other thing I want to do is figure out at what theta am I going to get cosine to be 1. So I said cosine needs to be 1, but where on my unit circle is cosine going to get me 1 point for me? Cosine would get you 1 at 0 degrees, okay, or 0 radians. We can go radians or degrees here pretty easily. Make sense on the first one? Yeah. Let's try one more just to make sure we got it. 2 minus something. I'm trying to plug in to something here. What number would I want to plug in for cosine of theta to make this as big as possible? 1 or negative 1? Negative 1. Because if I plug in negative 1, now it becomes R equals 2 plus 1. That would get me 3. At what theta is cosine going to get me negative 1? 180 degrees. That is going to get me the biggest value. Find the next two. Go. Uh, we're finding the maximum here. R equals 1 plus 3 sine theta. Uh, Morgan, what was your biggest radius that you could get here? You'd want to plug in one. So your radius would be 4. And where, at what angle would that be true? When is sine going to get you 1? At 90 degrees. Good. My next one, 2 minus 5 sine theta. Uh, Aaron, what's the biggest radius or what number would you want to plug in here to make this as big as possible? Negative one. Good. So your biggest radius that you could get is seven. And at what angle would I plug in uh, to get sine to be negative one? Wonderful. And by go with those maximums. That's an important aspect to what we're doing. Now that we've identified these three concepts, we're going to apply them when we graph them. Okay, so when we graph this stuff on a test or a quiz, this is how we're going to be able to set it up. Okay, so our job is to graph 2 plus 2 sine theta. First thing I want to do is identify what type of graph it's going to be. If it's 2 plus 2, what shape am I going to have? It is a cardioid because those numbers are the same. It's a cardioid. Next thing I'm doing is symmetry. Show me with your hands. How would you be able to fold this graph? y-axis symmetry you could fold it like a walrus i almost wrote walrus a walrus you know they yeah seal walrus yeah seal walrus is probably do it too i i meant to say seal it's fine why y-axis it is two plus two times something what number would i want to plug in here to make it as big as possible one so my biggest r is four what would I plug in to make sine be 1? 90 degrees. So that's a point. We're going to graph these things. We are doing them with an old-fashioned XY uh, T-chart. Okay, It's a little bit different. It's R and theta, but we're going to do a T-chart. There's one ordered pair. 4, 90 is an ordered pair going to be on this graph. So I'm going to go to 90 degrees. I'm going to a radius of 4. I'm going to put a dot. When we graph these things, you could do this any way you wanted to. If you just wanted to start plugging in all of the thetas, you could get a graph. But we're going to be efficient in what we do. Okay, The way we graph these, we're always going to graph five points. Okay, We're going to have five points by the time we get done. The, one, the most important thing to me on this thing is it has y-axis symmetry. So if it has y-axis symmetry, I don't need to look at both sides of the graph. I just want to look at one half and be able to fold it over to get the other side. Okay, so if I know what is happening over here on this half of the graph, I can just take all of this information and fold it over to the other half. You could do either half. I'm always going to do the right side. Okay, so you can do whatever side makes you feel good. I go right always. All right, so we just plugged in 90 degrees. I go from wherever we started. So we started at 90. Cool. I'm going to work my way around. So the next thing I'm doing 
is 60 degrees. And again, you're plugging into this. 2 plus 2 times something. What is the sine of 60 degrees going to be? Root 3 over 2. Anybody want to multiply something by root 3 over 2? I don't either. We could easily plug it in, but it, we just don't need to. Okay? So we're going to skip it because it's going to give me an ugly answer. We'll just skip it. We could do it. We could get a decimal. Not worth it. What about 45 degrees? What is sine at 45 degrees going to be? Root 2 over 2. Yucky. I don't want to deal with that, so I'm just going to skip it. I could do it. I don't have to, though. Okay? Because I'm going to get enough points to doing some easier ones. What about 30 degrees? Sine at 30 degrees gets me an easy number to use, like 1 half. And so since it's an easy number, let's do that value. 2 plus 2 times a half. So it's going to be 2 plus 1. What would my radius be? My radius is 3. So that gives me an ordered pair. 30 degrees, a radius of 3. I could do different things. I just feel like we're going to pick the easiest ones and make this as easy on me as I can. We're going to keep going. What about 0 degrees? What would sine be at 0 degrees? It'd be 0. So that's easy to use. So let's use the easy to use ones at 0 degrees. It's 0. 2 plus 0. The radius is 2. Easy to do, so I'm going to do it. I'm still working my way around. Zero was good. What about 330? What would sine be at 330 degrees? Negative one half. So that's not too bad. So let's do that one. Negative one half. Two minus one. Oh, that gets me a radius of one. And then I'm still going. I still got to work the rest of my way around. 315. Nah, it's a radical. 330, nah, it's a radical. But 270, not a radical. 2 plus 2, what would sine be down there at 270 degrees? Negative 1, so it's 2 minus 2, I get a radius of 0. So I can plot that 270, but it's at 0, so I'm just right back there in the middle. Questions to that point. Once we've got that, we know that this graph has symmetry. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all of those points that I plotted and fold them over the over the y-axis. So like this blue dot right here that's at 330, it's going to come across and be over here at 3150. This dot right here that was at 20, I'm going to fold it over to 2180. This dot right here that was at 1330. I'm going to fold it over to 1 to 10. And then obviously the 270 is already on the y-axis, so I don't really have to fold that. There is my graph. You get to use your calculator, though. So let's use our calculator. Break out your calculator. Hit your mode button. again, Or you don't have to hit your mode button. Make sure you're in radians. Make sure you're in polar. You can't, be, you can't graph these things without being in radians and polar. Then I'm going to hit the window button. Check to see if your window is the same as mine. I'm going to change that to be 0.1, my theta step. But something along those lines, again, your Y min and Y max, making them something like 6.7 is just going to help not disturb your picture. Everybody good to this point? Let's graph it. Hit the, win or hit the Y equals button. Let's graph that shape. It was 2 plus 2. Sine theta, is that correct? 2 plus 2 sine theta, we type it in. Then we're just going to hit the graph button. Boom, there is my picture. It is a cardioid. It is a heart-looking shape, just like we thought it was supposed to be. Let's go back to our picture and try to graph that the best we can. We saw it. We're just trying to connect the dots. So my graph is going to look like this. I connected those dots in the same order that I plotted them. Oh, that's ugly at the end. I was so close to making a good shape. There's my shape, though. You don't have to be perfect. I understand that they're hard to graph. As you graph them, think swirls. They're very swirly in what they do. They're very spirally. Um, you do need the points in the correct spot, though. If your points are in the wrong spot, I'm not giving you credit. Okay, I don't want to see like straight lines like that either. You're trying to do the best you can to have that same idea. Questions on the first one? Let's do it again. Flip it over. Graph this one. Go ahead with your neighbor and fill in this top part. 
see if you can do that without me. Go. Obviously, it's a Lima San here because these numbers are not the same. Is it with or without a loop? It's got a loop. It's got a loop because the first number is smaller than the second. Okay, it's got a loop. It has x-axis symmetry because it's a cosine graph. Then we're finding a maximum. Show me with your fingers. Where do you think, what is the maximum radius going to be here? Maximum radius should be a 5 because it's 1 minus 4 times something. We would want that number to be negative 1. Because if it's minus a negative, that's going to be plus. 1 plus 4 is 5. When is cosine going to get me negative 1? 180 degrees. That's a point, 5, 180. I already got a point on my graph. Again, when we're graphing limasons and cardioids, you're going to have five dots when we get done. Okay? It has x-axis symmetry, so I'm going to use that to my advantage. So what part of the graph do I need to know here? If I've got x-axis symmetry, what half do I need to know? Either the top or the bottom. It doesn't matter. I'm going to always do the top when given the choice, but I'm going to learn the top. Because if I learn the top, then I can fold it down and it will tell me the bottom. Okay, The one graph that people struggle with a little bit are limasons with a loop. Okay, Limasons with a loop. So we want to make sure that we're paying attention to this one because it's a little bit funky. Here we go. So we got our first one, 5, 180. We're graphing some dots. So again, we're doing the same thing we did before. We're plugging into this equation. 1 minus 4 times something. 180, we did it. 150, do we want to do cosine at 150? Nah, it's not very fun. 135? No, nah, it's ugly. It's got a radical. 120? Sure. Cosine at 120 would be a negative 1 half. So it's 1 plus a half. So it would be, I'm sorry, 1 plus half of 4, which would be 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. That is happening at 120 degrees. So there is an ordered pair. 3 comma 120. Put a dot. Then I could do 90. At 90 degrees, we're always going to use the main axes. We're always going to use any dot on the x-axis and the y-axis because those numbers are easy. So it's 1 minus 4 times cosine there would be 0. So it's 1 minus 0. That gets you one. So 90 comma one. Boom, there's a second dot. Third one. What's the next angle that I want to use? 60 degrees is fine. At 60 degrees, it's one minus four times cosine of 60, which would be positive one half. So that's one minus two. Ooh, that's negative one. Uh-oh, that's weird. That's new. So here's how that works. Remember, you know how to graph this. Here would be 160, but it's got a negative radius, so it's not going to go there. What do I do when I have a negative radius? Ride, ride the line. So instead of this one right here, we're going to ride it down to the bottom part. It's going to go right there. And then I got one more. I've got four ordered pairs. I need one more. 45? No, nah, it's got radicals. 30? No, nah, it's got radicals. Uh, zero though, we can do zero. One minus cosine at zero. What is cosine at zero going to get me? One. So it's one minus four, which would get me negative three. So one minus four is negative three. Here would be zero positive three, but it's zero negative three. So what do I need to do to get to a negative radius? Ride the line. We're going to the other side. It looks strange. It's going to look strange. This is why we have to use our calculator to make sure we know what's going on. We have x-axis symmetry. So the next thing I'm going to do is symmetrically align these points. I'm going to flip them over the line. It's why I do this in color, and I try to color coordinate because I think it's helpful. Okay, But this point up here is going to come down and match up with this point right here. This red dot is going to fold down to this point right here. And this gold dot is going to match up with that point up above it. When you go to graph it, it's helpful to think, what order did we graph this in? Okay, so if you think about what order we graphed it, we graphed this dot first, that one second, that one third, that one fourth, that one fifth. Okay, and then you would do the opposite on the way out. It's, 
It's a spiral. We can work our way through. Let's use our calculator just to have something to go off of. So I turn on my calculator. I hit Y equals. I'm typing in that thing. 1 minus 4 cosine theta. I type it in. I hit enter. I'm going to graph that guy. There is my graph. It looks like that. Okay, 1 minus 4 cosine theta. It looks like that. So again, you can connect it however you want. It's not going to be perfect, but I'm starting here. I'm going big, wide loop to the blue, to the red, to the gold, to the purple, back to the gold, to the red, to the blue, spiraling back out. There is my Limasan with a loop. Mine is not perfect. I did the best I could. You want to do better than me, then do it better than me. It is kind of hard. I've done it a lot, and I'm still not very good at it. But that's going to be my shape. Make it loopy. Make it have a loop in the middle. Do the best you can. If you just got to try to draw the graph based off of those points, I'm perfectly fine with that. Questions with graphing Lima sounds with a loop? Do the last one. Try that one with your neighbor. See what you can do without me. Go. Here we go. Let's see. We are graphing this thing. It's a limason without a loop because the leading coefficient is, or the constant is bigger than leading coefficient. It has x-axis symmetry. The maximum is going to be a radius of three because we're answering the question two minus what? We would want this to be negative one. When is cosine going to get me negative one? That is at 180 degrees. So again, we've got an ordered pair of a maximum of three, 180. Then we're going around. It has x-axis symmetry. So I'm going to go around the top half of this graph. I'm going to work my way around. So I used 180. No, no, yes to 120 because at 120, I can do cosine at 120. It would be negative one, or I'm sorry, yeah, negative one half. Two plus a half gets me 2.5. Go to my next one. Next thing I got is 90 degrees. So at 90 degrees, it's two minus zero. So I get zero. Keep working my way around. The next one's going to be 60 degrees. 2 minus 60 degrees, that would be 1 half. 2 minus a half is 1.5. 45, no. 30, no. But at 0 degrees, we can do that one. At 0 degrees, it'd be 2 minus 1, because that's what cosine at 1 is. 2 minus 1 would be 1. There would be my last dot. We take those dots, we fold them over the line. So that one's going to match up down here. Uh, green dot matches down here. Purple dot matches right there. We take them, we graph them, we connect the dots. Your final shape looks like that. Limasons without a loop are ugly. They're just circles that have been smashed a little bit, but that's our setup. Questions on something there? I know I went through that pretty quick, but I think we're doing all right. Show me.